Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Q2 FY22 Earnings Conference Call of Sanata Software Limited. As a reminder, all participants' lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star 10-0 on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Shikhar Reddy, Managing Director and CEO, Sonata Software Limited. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Margaret, and uh, good morning, everybody who uh, joined us uh, this morning. Uh, I have today with me on the call, Mr. Uh, Jagannathan Chakravarti, our CFO, Mr. Satya Narayana, the uh, head of finance, uh, Mr. Sujit Manti, head of our India and Asia business, and Mr. Raghunath Puranik, a chief growth officer based out of the uh, U.S. Uh, uh, as you know, I think the, uh, uh, the results have now been uh, posted uh, on our website post the announcement uh, and the board meeting uh, yesterday. Uh, so I'll quickly take you through some of the uh, qualitative highlights of the performance uh, the last quarter and uh, and then some uh, you know uh, headline outlook uh, of where we see today uh, the business in the next uh, uh, few quarters uh, as i did mention uh, last time uh, uh, the demand continues to look uh, extremely uh, promising uh, i had also mentioned last time that uh, the, there are there are uh, there were and have been and continue to be uh, supply uh, constraints, um, as you all are uh, aware of uh, uh, overall the current context on the supply side uh, in the industry. Uh, we have, uh, as mentioned, put in a lot of, uh, uh, I think, uh, initiatives uh, to, to create capacities, to look for alternate uh, sources for talent, uh, both uh, in India and uh, outside India. Uh, also look for uh, opening up proximity uh, delivery uh, centers uh, in, in some of the markets to both to serve our clients better and also uh, um, uh, address uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, challenge, uh, challenge issues. So, uh, so as I said, so overall the demand situation looks good. Um, we are addressing the supply constraints uh, and even if you factor in the additional uh, capacity we got from the acquisition of Encore, we have added about, I think, a net, uh, a net of about uh, 300 people last quarter. Um, and I, I believe that we should continue to be able to do that uh, uh, similarly as we go forward, both both for uh, uh, you know meeting our current needs and actually uh, investing and planning for the future. I, I think that's, I think, uh, what we are doing to, to, to ensure that we have the sufficient uh, uh, capacity two to three quarters from now, which has which has been uh, really uh, created uh, internally and uh, are able to meet any kind of uh, uh, needs uh, which we will have uh, going forward. So overall, if you take each of our uh, business segments, uh, uh, in the international uh, business, I think we have seen uh, good uh, growth across most of our uh, industry uh, industry verticals. Uh, we have seen a uh, continue to see a growth in our uh, digital uh, services uh, business. Uh, again, I think primarily based on and driven by our whole uh, platformation uh, theme and value proposition and approach approach to market, along with the uh, uh, Microsoft uh, Alliance led uh, uh, go to market. On the Domestic business, uh, we continue to see uh, extremely uh, steady, steady growth, uh, as I said, uh, and uh, we continue to see that um, as we as we go forward, uh, both driven by 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 demand in the market, uh, additional uh, partnerships uh, we have signed, uh, uh, a more uh, shift from our uh, clients to cloud, uh, leading to more, uh, I would say, annuity-led uh, arrangements. Uh, we have made this acquisition of Encore, which had announced last uh, in the last meeting, but it had just happened. Uh, now it's about a, about a couple of months uh, uh, 
domestic uh, acquisition. So that's that's going well, and some of the figures are reflected in the uh, current uh, in the current quarter. Our uh, CX business and GBW, as I said, uh, based on the, as the COVID rate is reducing in in various markets, we are seeing uh, some of the markets come back again. We are investing a lot more into that business. So while we will see a top line growth, uh, we may not see a commensurate uh, growth in uh, in uh, impact. While the margins in that business are, are good uh, because of the investment both in marketing people um, and and the development of the uh, uh, CX. Uh, platform. So overall, uh, net net, uh, we continue to see uh, the demand being good across all the geographies, across all the uh, industry verticals. We are uh, doing, have done, and we continue to do a lot uh, to ensure we uh, meet the supply uh, uh, related uh, 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 issues um, as we go forward. And uh, overall, I think the margins continue to be healthy, although there are obviously increases uh, in costs driven by the supply side. The thing, if you uh, do a, a, a limited one-off uh, item, which we had last quarter, our margins this quarter continue to be uh, decent, uh, while on the organic basis, uh, the margin growth has not been significant, while the growth in uh, revenue has been about, I think, 5 5.5% 5 on the international services side. So, as I said, we continue to see um, uh, uh, a very robust, promising demand situation. Uh, continue to invest in, in a lot more senior talent. We have uh, uh, I added more senior talent. We have done some last quarter. Uh, we have done uh, some this quarter, both uh, beefing up our cloud and cyber security uh, uh, side of the practice. We have created the large deal team last quarter, and then now the deal, the deal team is operational. We'll continue to invest uh, in, 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 um, in senior uh, talent uh, uh, and creating uh, uh, for uh, growth. So that's, uh, I guess, in a nutshell, about the performance of the quarter and our visibility uh, for, the, for the future. I'll hand it over to Jagan to take you through uh, some of the details of the financials for the quarter, and then uh, we'll take uh, 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 questions uh, that you may have uh, at the end of uh, Jagan's presentation. So thank you all again, and over to Jagan. Yeah, thank you, Shikhar. Good morning, all. Uh, welcome to Sonata's learning conference. We will get into the quarterly financial performance. Uh, the quarterly, we have continued to have robust growth in our revenue. Uh, the consolidated revenue has uh, continued to have a quarterly uh, CQ uh, GR of 4% and the EBITDA CQ GR is 3% uh, and PAS CQ GR is 3.2%. We continue to have a robust profitability uh, and revenue growth uh, in both the business, India yeah, business as well as international business. In international business, uh, the uh, revenue CQ GR growth has been consistently high. In spite of uh, uh, the supply side constraints which uh, Shikhar was highlighting, we continue to grow the revenue very well. Our margins have expanded in this quarter and we are uh, doing well uh, both in terms of uh, EBITDA as well as uh, in terms of PAN. Uh, uh, with the addition of Encore, uh, the strength in our uh, expanded verticals are also doing well. Uh, we continue to have a, a robust outlook for the next few quarters uh, on the growth perspective. Domestic business, domestic business has been consistently doing well. This is like a seasonal uh, this thing. We have been highlighting that revenue. Please don't measure this business on revenue. Please measure this on gross contribution. If you see here, the gross contribution is consistently around the uh, 3.94 percentage. Uh, this is the this is the continued growth we have both in EBITDA as well as gross contribution, and the PAT percentage has been good uh, for this quarter. We will. This business is seeing a new growth perspective in the, with the uh, advent of cloud adoption by a lot of Indian companies. We continue to see a lot of growth in this uh, business in the coming quarters, and this has also performed very well on the cash collection perspective and the, the working capital investment perspective. The return on capital employee continues to be robust in this business. This is a broadly the financial summary of how much is the revenue, international revenue, 
uh, and also the uh, the domestic revenue. You can see the international revenue has solid growth of 11 percentage quarter on quarter and year on year growth of 25 percentage. Uh, the EBITDA percentage has also been solid in this business, and we need to continue to have robust growth of EBITDA uh, in, uh, in terms of uh, continued growth in revenue. Uh, in revenue, and uh, we expect this. Uh, uh, there can be some uh, cost increases coming in because of the demand in the market and also supply side constraints. But uh, we are very, very confident of doing well both in front of revenue and the uh, past perspective in the coming quarter. On some of the operational metrics, the US business continue to be the largest contributor for us. This uh, quarter, we have a little higher US contribution. And in terms of industry verticals, our uh, ISV vertical has uh, done well. And we continue to have robust growth in many other verticals like the retail essential has continued to be growing very well for us. Uh, and also uh, the uh, travel has uh, continued to be maintained at the same level. And domestic uh, the key digital services are uh, really doing well, particularly dynamic services. Uh, uh, and also the rest of the pl digital platformation services have been robust. And we continue to see the growth coming in in this uh, quarter. We continue to see the offshoring uh, little bit increase in this quarter compared to last quarter. Uh, however, uh, we feel that over a medium term perspective, this will get moderated a little bit. Our IP led revenue is uh, continuing to remain at 35 percent. Few more uh, operating metrics. With this, we have added uh, new clients have added for this quarter, uh, eight new clients have been added. And our, we have added more than a million dollar customer, five new customers have been added. The uh, top five uh, customers contribution remains uh, very robust and uh, our headcount addition has been very strong. Apart from the addition uh, from, uh, uh, from Encore, we have also got a solid addition in the uh, organically with this company. And uh, sales and marketing, we have, as uh, Mr. Shikhar highlighted, we continue to invest and expand on the sales and marketing. Uh, uh, more investments are happening. We expect this to uh, add to our uh, growth in the coming quarter. With this, I conclude my financial presentation uh, and it's back uh, for a question. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchdown telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Anyone who would like to ask a question, you may press star and one at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Mohan Kumar from MJ Financial. Please go ahead. Um, hi, good morning and uh, congrats on a great set of numbers. Um, uh, please forgive my ignorance over here. I'm relatively new to the, the company and I just want to understand uh, what's driving the seasonality over here because I've noticed that for the last couple of years too, the, the Q, Q2 tends to be relatively weaker uh, versus the rest of the year. So can you please throw some light on that? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, no, All right. Problem. Yeah, yeah. So the seasonality, as you mentioned, is in our domestic business, and the domestic business depends upon uh, uh, sometimes lumpy deals which happen in quarters. So, so some, so, so typically in Q2, there are less of these large deals. So typically, large deals means lower margins. So the percentage of when you have quarters where the deals are larger. The percentage of the margin will decrease. So, so that's why, as Jagan mentioned, we manage this business based on gross margin and not on uh, absolute margin. Uh, so that's what we have been mentioning uh, in the last whatever, uh, you know, 30, 40 quarters, um, uh, where we have tried to describe what this uh, business is, how it is managed kind of stuff. And we, that gross margin continues to uh, steadily increase. And because of that, the fat keeps increasing. 
Got it, got it. That sounds good. Thank, thanks a lot for that. Just uh, one, one more question on the on similar lines. So, the margins have expanded considerably uh, in this quarter. So, can we expect that trend to continue? Because so you've you've spoken about supply side concerns, uh, but despite that, uh, looks like pricing power is really coming in. So, can you uh, throw some light on what can we expect for probably the next couple of quarters, maybe the next couple of years, while demand continues to remain solid? I would. Stay cautious in the immediate future. Uh, uh, while we will work towards retaining and uh, the margins, uh, given the pressure on the supply side, but in the long term, I think uh, the margins should be robust. Uh, you know, when things uh, stabilize and one is going to get back to a more stable situation on the supply side, uh, one can expect the margins. To be better, but in the short term, I mean, short term, uh, everybody's guess, but one is all expecting it's about at least three to four quarters, uh, where one can uh, be uh, uh, dependent on the dynamics on the supply side in the market. Got it, got it. Sounds good. And just one final question. So, uh, I remember during the last call, you had alluded to uh, growth on a YOY basis of close to 20%, and the last two quarters have been really strong. So can we expect probably to see a number slightly higher yes, than that? Sub sub subject to the supply side, next quarter, we'll have a lot more vacations and stuff like that. But overall, I think, as, it, as we see, as I mentioned last time, uh, don't see any reason why we shouldn't meet that number. Perfect. Thank you very much. All the best for coming quarters. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone who would like to ask a question, you may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Vedic Sarkar from Unify Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, Shikha, hi. Good morning. Congrats on a very strong quarter. Couple of questions. Uh, could you flesh out the moving parts within the managed cloud practice for us? What what is driving this kind of momentum? Uh, is this our uh, non Azure practice? And what are your service components within this SB? Uh, Managed. Okay, managed cloud services. I've got two 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 components really. Uh, one is the uh, the infrastructure related services for cloud, which are mainly uh, management of the cloud infrastructure or migration, which are really lift and shift to a cloud environment. Uh, then on the development side, there are uh, you know cloud native applications. Uh, development, uh, modernization of existing cloud uh, applications onto the cloud. So these are the two service categories uh, which are there uh, in the managed cloud services. And uh, uh, in, in, the, in the initial phase, we are seeing more on the on the managed services and migrations, and now we are seeing uh, more uh, uh, more uh, demand pickup also on the uh, in native cloud development and modernization and so on and so forth. Sure, that, that's clear. And also the practice area within the Microsoft digital platform, uh, how much of this is project-based versus annuity? And, and uh, is this primarily as your migration or is there uh, a cloud native development practice within this as well? The Microsoft digital platform uh, is really the Dynamics platform and the surround of the Dynamics. So, so that's the Microsoft uh, digital platform. And then there is the uh, Azure cloud, which is a separate uh, separate platform. Sure. So, 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 you know, how is that different from what you report within Microsoft Dynamics? Sorry. Uh, no, see, yeah. unless I, uh, you know, unless I interpret this wrong, uh, you, you, you report uh, the practice areas around Microsoft as Microsoft Dynamics as well as Microsoft Digital Platform. You're saying uh, a part of Microsoft Digital Platform also does work for Dynamics. Did I hear you right? Okay, I, I, I should uh, let me just then step back. If we're reporting the Dynamics separately, then the Dynamics is separate. Then the Digital Platform yes. is non Dynamics part of the micro, which is then Azure and Data. Okay, cool. Uh, that, that, that's clear. Uh, so just a bookkeeping question on your reported growth. Uh, excess acquisition that you did last quarter, what is the constant currency currently? Uh, if, you, if you can please call that out. Sorry, I didn't get the question. No, just a bookkeeping question on the reported growth. Excess acquisition that you completed last quarter, uh, yeah, what is the constant currency number growth? Growth 
on international services has been i think 5 or 5.5% of the organic growth on the international services on the revenue sure. side and the margin if we i mean if we adjust for that one time uh, you know we took last quarter on the ilfs and all that i don't know i can ask my finance team to share it but my feeling is the margin would also be of a similar nature but if you just see the reported number and the margin uh, uh, growth may be about a percent Sure, and if I could just slip in one last question, uh, the run rate on uh, you know your top client and travel uh, seems to have stagnated. Uh, although uh, the EU travel seems to have come back quite strongly, uh, uh, you know, is the is the outlook looking any better than what it was a couple of quarters back? That's one account where we have had supply challenges. Uh, otherwise, outlook looks good. Sure, thanks, Sir. Best wishes. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mohit Jain from Anand Rathi. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, three questions. One was uh, related to ISP OPD revenue growth. Like, it appears that some part of the acquired revenue has gone into that because healthcare revenue, which is shown separately, is a small component of the overall integration. So, can you give us what was the growth in ISP sequentially and uh, what is the outlook there in that particular segment? I can ask our finance team to share the number because, as you said, some part of the Encore team, I don't know what part of the Encore revenue is, uh, what part of the Encore revenue is one of the ISVs. They have uh, their three segments logistics, ISV, and SK. Uh, can somebody from the finance team uh, answer that question? Yes, this is growth on ISV yes, uh, and what is the total growth, yeah. including uh, Encore stuff on the ISV side? Yes. Uh, the uh, uh, major portion is between healthcare and logistics. Log the other portion, uh, say a small, small portion, has been added to the uh, ISP segment. It is about, uh, tw no, about 20 percentage of the revenue of on course. Uh, 20 percent of ISP revenue? Uh, no, no, of on core revenue. On core, whatever is the quarterly revenue we have added. On core revenue is added to ISP segment. Uh, correct, 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 correct. Correct. And what yes. is the outlook there, sir, from an ISV segment perspective on an organic basis? Like, what kind of growth rates are we seeing in terms of recovery, acceleration, etc.? No, as you said, we are seeing growth across all the segments, boys. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, sir, uh, why I am asking this is generally high tech is accelerating versus the rest of the segments. Uh, for us, also, it may, I mean. As Bedek also asked you, you are aligned in the right technology area and the client. So, should we expect for us also, ISV will be accelerating and outperforming the other segments, or do you think it will be evenly spread uh, from Sonata's perspective? I mean, if we see our pipeline, I mean, what we have, right? Uh, I'm seeing a more unified distribution, right? Okay. Uh, okay. The not uh, if I see my current deal pipeline, both existing and new. Sir, second was on IT services margins. Now, last quarter also you opened some centers abroad. And I think in the last call you said that as things normalize, you are also, or you have plans to diversify the delivery base. Also, there are uh, these wage pressures in India. So, what kind of IT services margins uh, are you looking at uh, from a That's steady state? The previous person, I, I, I mean, mm -hmm. I would be cautious for the next three, four quarters while we try to manage okay. it. Both sides, uh, hmm. both trying to get some extra revenue and and trying to manage these costs through more uh, very creative uh, talent uh, development initiatives. I, but I would remain con cautious. I mean, I mean, it's very difficult. I mean, you know, I don't know uh, to predict because cautious. pretty cautious. volatile, right? Now. Exactly. Exactly. So the exactly. pressures are between thirty percent to one hundred and twenty percent. So don't know what that number will be. So I would rather be extremely cautious at this time. Uh, to be, be cautious, we are trying to manage this, uh, but very difficult to predict. So I, I would say that let us be cautious for the next three to four quarters. Uh, cautious could be like 100, 200 basis point impact could be there, or do you think, could it be like severe or something? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to say, you know, I mean, uh, okay. What is the uh, 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 impact on both the sides? So, it, it, at, this, I, at this stage, I would say let's take a qualitative 
uh, statement of let us be cautious and it will be good if we can surprise ourselves as we go forward. And sir, last is a is a repeat question for last many calls. Now this time you said travel, you are turning positive. Uh, yes. It, like you you so our previous run rate of course was much higher and uh, we are sort of at a much lower number. Also industry has recovered on the travel side, IT services yes. industry. Yes. So now given this revised outlook etc that you have on European travel, uh, in how many is is there a way we can say that in let's say three quarters four quarters you can go back to the previous highs? Is there a some, some direction? I, 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 I think so. As I said, we have a more uh, more more of our supply constraint had impacted that particular business. Um, so so demand is picking up uh, more or less. Uh, the client has been back to. Uh, 80 80 percent of 2019 numbers so mm. so okay, she's hoping to get back to 100 percent of 2019 numbers uh in the next one quarters so mm. the demand is not a problem uh and we are working towards uh you know uh, solving the supply that issue so hopefully we'll solve it and so to that extent yeah the demand looks uh, extremely robust so this quarter travel stagnation was more to do with supply than demand for the top line. Yes, yes, absolutely, totally. So if the hiring stays the way it has been in 2Q, you I'm expect backfill everything. Yeah, yeah. Okay, perfect, sir. That's all from my side. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Chandra from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Ah, uh, yes, sir, and thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, no. Uh, no, just to extend the uh, like question on the travel vertical. So you said that uh, we will reach 100% of, you know, like 2019 number. So I just like to understand uh, travel with the larger client. So is the growth will be mostly, you know, like linked to the recovery in the travel, and is it like is it like volume linked, or have we, uh, you know, increased the scope of work with the larger client, or is it uh, like newer areas that we're working in, or is it just the uh, no, recovery of the volumes, uh, you know, uh, that like we were doing, you know, that uh, like we were doing earlier. So on the on the travel vertical, and second is on the on the you know attrition number. If you can share that, how has been the attrition, and uh, you know on the margins front, we have done you know pretty well. But uh, we have mentioned that we are you know uh, we are likely to build a you know bench, uh, especially for the Microsoft uh, practice. So how that is going to impact the margins in the coming verticals? A lot of questions. So, when I said uh, uh, on the travel side, yeah, right now, what in the last 18 months, the focus was on building new stuff because they were wanting to use that opportunity to create new stuff, right? Now, once things come back to normal, then we'll go back to doing the actual keeping the business going uh, work, and that should start picking up. So, so that's where we will expect growth to come from. The new thing is what we have been doing already, kind of thing. So that's on the on the on the travel on the travel business. And uh, I guess your next question was uh, around uh, attrition and uh, yeah yeah and the attrition has and been the about uh, I think about twenty three to twenty five percent. And uh, then the next question you had was on. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, the margins have answered that question, right? We are fact, trying to factor all this building capacity and all that into what we are trying to do, but also trying to ensure that, you know, we keep the margins where we are. So, so very difficult at this stage to give an exact number, right? And I've answered this question to the two previous people also. No, so, uh, no, I was just trying to understand from, uh, you know, the angle that we are, you know, like trying to build a bench, right? So will yes. that have an incremental impact on the margins, or we are, we are okay with you know, this kind of margin uh, band that we're working with? The bench is is uh, is already there. I mean, we have added, as I said, 300 people. We had you know almost added about I think five six hundred people in the last two quarters. So without the uh, without the uh, acquisition numbers. So so. So I'm less concerned because that's controllable cost. Uh, the the the, uh, the uncont uncontrolled cost is the lateral part, which is we need to do to meet immediate needs. Uh, you know, and that's where I think uh, I will be cautious uh, of either doing backfill or or meeting immediate needs, uh, not waiting for the uh, uh, the bench which has been uh, created. Right, we have to 
create a deliverable branch. That means you take X kind of people and then uh, create the training and all that so that they're, uh, uh, and these are not trainees, these are, uh, again, experienced people, but the different skills and how we train them on digital skills and then uh, put them on the projects. So, so that's, uh, that's a more controllable phenomenon. Uh, so that's factored in. It's, it's really how, what the lateral impact, uh, both the immediate needs and backfilling, and what that impact can be is what I want to be cautious about. Okay, and uh, on the on the international business, uh, you know, what is the subcontracting, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, subcontracting cost, and how that has changed? Uh, so obviously that has gone up for the industry. So is it uh, you now ours is uh, you know somewhat uh, like you know okay. different okay. from the industry, or uh, uh, there is rising I subcontracting? I get your question. I don't know whether we are looking at that way. Do you have any number of the finance team on that? Uh, no, Chikar, we have not disclosed any specific numbers on that. But uh, uh, the subcontractor cost is uh, remaining at the uh, similar levels of, uh, it has literally come down compared to last quarter, Chikar. Okay. Okay. Because they're, they're saying it's gone up for others, so that's why there are people that... Yeah, yeah. Because uh, last quarter we have uh, invested a lot because of supply chain constraints and COVID impact. Uh, this time we have a little bit moderation has happened, but it's not substantially different. Okay, okay, so I, I guess if you can share that number going forward, that will be useful because yeah. of the metric for its package. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Anyone who would like to ask a question, you may press star and one. The next question is on the line of Mohan Kumar from MJ Financial. Please go ahead. Hi, so just uh, one question on the uh, the hiring front. So. You you had mentioned that uh, you are looking to hire heavily, so I just wanted to know if there is a number around what, how many people that you probably would be uh, hiring over the next uh, two to three quarters, um, and would that be largely backfilling, or would that be kind of to build up new capacity? And just a follow up on that, I I've, I've noticed in your presentation that the utilization uh, is around ninety percent, so. Um, do we do we see a position where we probably get a utilization to close to the 95 mark uh, over the year? Sorry, I, I the utilization is like 80 percent, right? Not 90 percent. Sorry, yeah, 80 percent. So do you expect that number to go up uh, over the next? Uh, uh, no, uh, not for the next two to three quarters. And uh, with respect to the hiring, so the numbers, could you throw some light on what are the numbers they're expecting over the next couple of quarters? And would that be more backfilling, or would that be uh, for the new business? Both. Uh, it will be both, uh, I mean, three things. Backfilling, immediate needs, and future demand. So, Sorry. looking at a, maybe a gross number of about possibly 600 people a quarter. A gross number. Sorry, sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dheeraj Dave from Summit Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for providing the opportunity. Congratulations on good set of numbers. Uh, one question I had is related to slide 19. We see the lowest customer addition. In fact, uh, if you see this in last four quarter, we just added eight customer as per the presentation in Q2 22 in international business. So one part is that, and if I look at the new million customer data, I find that we have almost like 36 new million customers, but uh, five are being added from Encore equation. So if I take that, then basically there is no sequential improvement. Uh, in fact, if, uh, so any reason why we are not seeing, despite size being so great demand, why we are not able to scale up our customer to 1 million kind of thing? Any thought on that? No, so the, our description of a million customer is not as a customer of the potential to give us a million dollars. It's the, the thing where the customer reached the annuity rate of a million dollars. You understanding the difference? Yeah, yeah, no, no. My question is, the point is that if I look at past data, we used to have one, two addition every quarter, at least one or two. If I look at Q2 21 to Q2, Q1 22, we find yeah, that yeah, there has been... Correct. What I'm trying to say is that addition is not that the customer was acquired the previous quarter. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah that I understood. That it reached yeah, the 1 million milestone. Acquired, uh, some time back. Now yes. we have reached a million 
dollar run rate business yes right so so it can vary based on when each of these customers hit a run rate business that's all i'm trying to say yeah so you you many many is optimistic that over a period of time many of customer will reach probably yeah. the timing yeah. issue is who have been acquired will convert into run, uh, into uh, into a million dollar run rate customer that's correct yeah and secondly and on on course side as we spend more and more on uh, uh, on people with more potential so that extends uh, we are trying we are getting very selective about the clients we are adding to our portfolio fine enough and we and, will uh, see that, that these numbers will not be as high as in the past yeah so this five customer which we have million dollar approximately from encore can you provide some geographical distribution is, is it us based or which all area which encore all is 100% US. us company okay fine thanks a lot wish you all the best thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen you may press star and one to ask a question at this time The next question is from the line of Vipul Shah from Sumangal Investment. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Congratulations for a good set of numbers. Uh, my question is: uh, Can you give the financials of uh, Encore and uh, what capabilities it brings to the table? Okay, let me answer the first, second question first, and I'll ask from my finance team to answer the first question. So, the capability, as I said, industry verticals are healthcare, logistics, and IFE. Uh, uh the main capability is on the uh, cloud services uh and then the uh, digital assurance services okay i'm going to ask my finance team to share the numbers which have come into this yes, model we have disclosed this during the acquisition uh, uh, acquisition also they they have a run rate of around the 15 uh, plus million dollars of revenue with about 20 percentage of the they are running at so 15 million annually right annually yes and uh, mr jagannath can you give me employee cost uh, specifically for uh, it services for uh, this quarter and last quarter employee cost is disclosed in our financials uh, we can get uh, from there uh, from the financial system this regulation 33 has the details of all those things for it services specifically Specifically, uh, IT services uh, employee percentage is not uh, the cost has substantially changed as a percentage of revenue. Uh, you will be able to. I will. Uh, I will offline uh, everything. I didn't find it anywhere. So why don't you uh, share the number? Uh, okay, we will uh, check on that uh, details and then share it with you offline. Share it offline. I mean, should I drop a mail or call you? Yeah, yeah. please, please share. Uh, drop a mail. Then. No, no, we will not share it offline. Whatever we share, we we'll put it on our website. There will be no offline. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, Chika. Yes, yes. we will do that. Offline. First, I have to and prepare for it, and then I disclose it uh, to him, Chika, on the call. That is the reason why I asked him. I will share it uh, separately because I have to update the system uh, also. And lastly, can you give the subcontracting? Um, expenses uh, means exact number for for last quarter and yeah i have answered the previous question he doesn't have it is when he shares it when he discloses it and puts it out he shares that also with you correct okay okay yeah. right. thank you thank you anyone who would like to ask a question you may press star and one the next question is from the line of uday sidhar from kona wealth management please go ahead uh, hello uh, good morning everybody uh, sir my question is uh, you mentioned there are supply side constraints so could you highlight what are the three biggest supply side constraints and what is the risk mitigation strategy the company has undertaken what are the, what what was the question Uh, sir, uh, what are the three biggest supply side constraints you are facing, and what is the mitigation strategy for the same? Okay, okay. supply side constraints are uh, uh, attrition, um, uh, then uh, getting the right people at the right cost in the market uh, at the right time, and the third is ensuring that the people who are offered actually join join the company. So these are the three supply side. Supply side constraints. Um, did I did you get the answer? Yes, sir. So, so what is the mitigation strategy for the same? So, uh, like yeah, we are looking. We have done a compensation review. We have done an interim compensation review. We 
looking at another compensation review, uh, partly something something this quarter and then starting in January, uh, starting with the quarter of January 1st. Just on compensation to improve retention. Of, of course, there are a lot of uh, employee engagement initiatives and career planning, career migration, uh, switching, uh, moving them to the right uh, right project, giving them higher roles, uh, all that kind of stuff. So, so that's the second part about uh, their own uh, career and, and you know all that kind of stuff uh, to uh, to get the, uh, the uh, attrition done. Uh, the second is obviously, I mean, we have scaled up our our, our recruitment capacity by I think five x in terms of uh, I think today I don't know we must be having uh, we have increased our recruit recruiting team by from about fifteen to fifty and we got some uh, recruitment process outsourcing and then as I said we're looking at other. Uh, you, you know, markets, uh, both both uh, tier three, tier four, uh, rural India, rural outsourcing, and, and some other countries uh, for for getting talent. So that's on the uh, talent uh, this thing. Uh, third is like I think it's you know uh, we cannot do anything about uh, you know if somebody today uh, quits and has five jobs, you can't do anything about you know ensuring what percentage of offers we make uh, join you. Um, so all we are doing is that. As I said, the key biggest thing we are doing is to uh, proactively create capacity, uh, and that I, I, is the largest risk mitigation strategy we are implementing. So, in similarly, in that line, uh, yes, so uh, we understand that internally you are doing things to keep employees engaged and attractive. But at the same time, uh, we have friends in the IT space, right? so they are getting offers left and right from other companies, so they are likely to move to ones which pay more. So, in that context, Internally, what is the percentage in increase in employee cost uh, that per, with a like 15 or 20 beyond which you will put a cap? So just to understand. No, I didn't understand. What was the question? So uh, the thing is, uh, employee cost going forward, it has increased substantially for all IT companies in the last uh, nine to 12 months. Right. So, uh, so and that's an industry-wide thing. So, so not a specific or industry-specific. What do you think? Is it cannot keep exponentially growing, right? So there is a point no, at which no, companies will... you have to create your own capacity. Uh, that's what I'm trying to say. So, so you okay. you keep the uh, what is the popular concept called the pyramid in the industry. Oh. I mean, you oh. focus on the pyramid. Uh, okay. So right now the pyramid has become top heavy. So you get it back to the normal stuff. And for that you just need to create capacity. There's nothing else you can do about it. I mean, you, you go into the market, you want somebody, the cost will go up. There's no other option. Oh, okay. See, sir, my final question is, sir, uh, the theme of digitalization, which played very well for many IT companies, especially companies like uh, yours, uh, during the COVID period. So can we assume that trend overall is still on a exponential growth or it has tapered down to some extent because a lot of people have adopted that already? Not yet. I think uh, there, there, is still a, uh, uh, there is still a reasonable amount of tailwind on that, on that uh, thing. So... How long uh, we don't know, but obviously there was a you know it's not that the digitalization if it was at a, let a 15 to 18 percent growth kind of stuff before the pandemic that has just jumped up to about 30 percent. Even if it goes back to 18 percent or whatever, it'll be on a much higher base. So to that extent, uh, it's, it's not going to become uh, less than what it was before the pandemic. Okay, okay. It's just boosted up in the interim, and that will continue for at least a few quarters. There's this bump up. So can we assume at least another uh, two uh, two years this trend will continue? This issue with 15% growth rate. Digitalization is going to continue for we don't know for however long, right? Okay. I can hear. That's not what we are talking about. It, it, this extra bump, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm, I'm thinking that the extra bump in the demand uh, by uh, by additional demand coming on a, on already a high growth uh, oh. industry, a high growth service line. Uh, 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 last two four quarters, that's my estimate. But yeah, and, and, and that is guess is as good as mine. Okay. Thank you, sir. That is all from my side. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good day. Thank you. Anyone who would like to ask a question, you may press star and one. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question at this time.
A reminder to all the participants, if you wish to ask a question, you need to press star followed by one. The next question is from the line of Mohan Kumar from MJ Financial. Please go ahead. Uh, so just one final question from my side. Uh, are you looking to do any more uh, acquisitions uh, across the world? I, I know you've done a few uh, in the last uh, couple of quarters, but sure. is there a pipeline that... Yeah, there is. There is a pipeline. We are we are looking at actively. Uh, but we, are, we will be cautious about uh, valuations are a bit steep right now, so we will not be reckless. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Amit Chandra from HPSC Security. Please go ahead. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah, so thanks for the opportunity again. So, sir, my my question is on the on the you know uh, domestic product services business. So uh, there we have seen some kind of weakness in this quarter. So the YOI growth was you know, the weakest in the last five you know five six quarters. So is there any any kind of uh, you know like pent up demand that was there, you know, which is taping down, or uh, we are you know fully confident of uh, you know the growth in the sector and also the you know receivable days the DSO days in this is coming down. So are we getting very selective in terms of or is it being driven by you know uh, no, like better collections or like what is driving that? So if you can throw some light on that. Okay, I, I don't know where you're getting our bio or why on our domestic business must be some huge stuff. I don't know what the number is, but, but, but must be at least 60 some percent. On on why uh, was around 15 percent earlier. It was doing at uh, no, 20 or 30 percent why why so. No no. So it, would it be about 50 60 percent why why on uh, domestic business? I don't know. My financing can share that with you, but maybe it's more also. So it's so I think. Uh, why oh why on the domestic business this quarter I don't know can the finance team share it on the one yes we can one second the domestic business the uh, 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 revenue growth was actually uh, 16 percentage growth so total is 32 point 32 33 percent no no the past Pat growth. Pat growth is yeah. uh, about uh, uh, it's seventy six percent growth year on year. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Amit, that's the number. Yeah. No, so I obviously, in terms of pad, there has been the growth, but that is like compared to the COVID quarter, like you no, know, in the in the COVID quarter. But in terms of the, you know, in terms of top line growth, I was talking about. So, yeah, as I said, top yeah. line is something which is, you know, I mean. Uh, yes, I mean, it could be, I mean, uh, any number. I said we focus on the cross contribution and top line is highly incidental on the uh, on the revenue mix for that quarter. Um, if, if you're going to see our top line for this business next quarter, Q3, uh, it will be huge because that's been the uh, seasonality in that business. Yeah. 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 And also on the, on the collections part in this business, so what is driving that? better collections uh, yeah i think things were obviously a little uh, little how do you say tight during the covid period where people were asking for extended credits and so on and so forth i think things have become a lot better now uh, since the end of that and i think that has uh, led to a, a more healthy uh, collection cycle okay we have very strong collection outlook. Uh, uh, money collection is there, and the total working capital investment is also coming down every quarter. Okay, so you know, and, uh, so we have mentioned 77% uh, around revenue from cloud and around 75% IoT business. So you know, that is also what is driving the high collections, right? Because um, uh, the quality of customers that we're engaging is has improved significantly in this uh, business. Sorry, the question is: Is the cloud and the annuity business driving better collection? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the nature of business is also helping, but the business is also improving a lot. Quite a lot of opportunities are coming, and uh, by nature, the are. Uh, Continued monitoring of credit quality of the customers and uh, you know, strong uh, 
follow up with the customer and the strong value delivery to the customer is helping us okay thank you and all the best sir thank you the next question is from the line of vipul shah from samantal investment please go ahead hi sir i mean we are a platformation based company so i just i am wondering our requirement of uh, engineers should be less as compared to traditional it services so could you please explain why uh, means uh, this mismatch or what i am missing here yeah yeah i've told many times that we are that platformation is not a platform we are not licensing platform we are not a ip business we are we said we are new, we are using our ip as a differentiator to get services business we are still a services business uh, uh and because of the platformation or ip we can hope to get better margins for our services uh, we are not a non linear business model i mean you know so that's what i'm trying to Uh, communicate we are not a non non linear business model okay so our revenues will always be linked with uh, in the service yes, yes. Right. unless yeah there is a clearly separate license led business then they will be non linear it won't the revenues won't be linked linked to headcount yes okay sir got it thank you very much thank you thank you As I know for the questions from the participants, I now hand the conference over to Mr. Shikhar Reddy for closing comments. Great. Okay. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, everybody, for joining the call today, and uh, thank you all for your questions. Thank you all for your support. Uh, whatever are the, I think, uh, 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 actions, our uh, finance team will get back uh, and share that uh, uh, information. So, thank you all again for joining us. Today. Uh, sir, before we conclude the call, I notice we have one question in queue. Would you like to take that? Yeah, sure. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rajiv Venkatesh, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, this is Rajiv. Uh, just one question. Uh, how are we shaping up on uh, other cloud uh, like AWS and uh, say the GCP? Um, we know we are masters uh, or the uh, leaders in. Uh, are uh, you but i just wanted to check on how we are setting up uh, yeah. on other clouds as i mentioned i think maybe two quarters three quarters back that we had just signed up with both these in india uh, and i think both are looking extremely good uh, and we will see them driving a uh, solid growth to start with in the india market and then like we did with microsoft we will then take these partnerships global but right now the focus uh, we just signed uh, about a year ago um and uh, i think it looks extremely good and we will see growth in our india, india business driven by these two partnerships and as we did with the other alliance we will then take it global okay thanks a lot thank you on behalf of sonata software limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and we may now disconnect your lines